In this video I attempt to sculpt the same character with varying levels of detail at varying time limits starting with 5 minutes, then 50 minutes and then 5 hours. Stay tuned to see how detailed and epic I can possibly get but also to find how simple sculpture actually can be. This video is sponsored by Huion. G'day everyone I'm Jazza and I love clay. And as you saw from the title and thumbnail of this video I'm going to be creating a sculpture using the same amount of clay three times in three different amounts of time. Now I've done this multiple times before with drawing and I'm sure you've seen it before on art channels but I don't think I've seen it yet with sculpting. Uh, clay I'm using here is called monster clay. It's really smooth, it's like putty, it's microwavable but be careful when you do that you don't want to burn yourself. And this is the soft grade that actually comes in the super sculpture box which I'll talk about at the end of the video. And the great thing about the soft grade is that you don't actually have to microwave it to make it workable. I tend to prefer the medium grade where you do sort of need to microwave it to work with it but if you're new to sculpture the soft grade is a really great thing to start off with because you really can just warm it up in the heat of your hands just by working it and getting it going. And before I scope the five minute one, I'm gonna make an armature. So to make an armature, all you need is some aluminium armature wire and some foil. Keep in mind, if you wanna reuse this stuff, don't microwave it to soften it to get it off of your armature if you use aluminium or metal in your armature. Pretty self-explanatory, but it's worth explaining anyway. As you can see, the tin foil will immediately start arcing and emanating a blue glow. Building an armature to work on top of gives you the benefit of having more size. So you're using less clay, you're just sort of filling the outside and also more structural integrity. This dude, for example, has a whole skeleton. At least 50% of him is foil and armature wire. So I'm just scrunching up some more of the foil into a neck and literally just looping this wire around a bunch, working all the way down towards the neck. That's my armature, potato head. Good start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have maybe a third to work with in its normal state. I'm actually gonna soften this in the microwave. Alrighty. Literally 30 seconds in the microwave in a microwave safe bowl and it's not liquid, but it's soft enough to be really easy to work with. And for my subject, I'm gonna create a portrait of King Amu. It was all part of an epic character design session, so I'll link to that in the description if you're curious about his story. He goes through this evolution, and I'm gonna start with his younger self. Then with the second sculpture, I'm gonna do his more elderly, homeless self. And then for the grand finale, I'm gonna spend five hours on his final form, King Amuntep V. So, five minutes on the clock. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna just start with the soft stuff because it's really easy to wrap around the whole armature. But I need to save enough clay and build enough of an effective silhouette to have something cool to work with. Let's get some of our more solid clay. Oh, it's a little too solid. You have to work it really fast. I only have four and a half minutes. Crap, I should have microwaved all of it. Jeremy, quick, Jeremy, run, Jeremy! Run. The clock's running out. I need that in the microwave for 20 seconds. Bring it back as fast as you can. I'll only have like two minutes to scope to it when it gets back. That's okay. So you have the silhouette to get first. So I push in where the eyes go and that gives you the eyebrows, works into the nose, and then you just work in the bulk of the silhouette. So the chin. Quick, Jeremy! Make 20 seconds go faster! You're a legend, mate. Round of applause for Jeremy! Yay! Go, Jeremy! You got a round of applause, my, my son. I don't know why I'm calling him my son. Okay, go. Give him some lips. I've got eight seconds left. Ready? <laughs> give, give his hat some details. Ah. Do you know what? Let's be honest, guys. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Obviously, it's not amazing, but five minutes. That is actually pretty amazing for five minutes. Try and do it with anything else. Works best with Monster Glide. That's why I love this stuff. But I also think it illustrates another point, which is that really it's about getting the core silhouette down first. As far as a head shape goes, that's not too bad. So part two, this is where we're gonna get a little more detailed. And I have almost an hour, 50 minutes. So same thing as last time. Let's start off with the armature. So I have microwaved this next block this time, done the whole thing, so I'm not doing any rush panics. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's so fun and satisfying to work with. All right, 50 minutes on the clock. Three, two, one, boom. Starting off exact same way as before, we just don't have to rush so much about it. Covering all the surfaces and starting to fill out the silhouette. 
Now I'll notice I'm being really, really rough and I'm not afraid to mess up the silhouette just to push the armature around or just have really messy chunks of clay to roughly represent the silhouette. This is kind of like the sketch. When you sketch, there's a lot of lines that go down that do not represent the final shape that it's making, but you need to sort of experiment and be really loose with the shape to sort of work your way towards the illustration that you want to sell on. You just got to get things moving and constantly move them towards what's going to work well. So normally at this stage, or earlier to be honest, I actually have my sculpture on a turntable, but because I want to keep this as simple as possible and as approachable to people who have never tried sculpture before as possible, here's a little pro tip. Just a ceramic bowl. Put it on upside down. The weight of the bowl will hold everything down and it will turn pretty smoothly. It'll mean you can take your hand off from holding it, but generally have it at a better height and work with two hands in all of the areas of detail that you want to start building. Here's another little pro tip for you. This might be a stage where I'd go through and smooth out all of these lines lines and wrinkles. That would take a long time. However, because this stuff melts with heat, you can use a hairdryer or a heat gun over the whole thing and that will soften all of the surface that you apply it to. All right, the time has snuck up on me now. I have 35 seconds left in the timed challenge. So I'm just gonna go through and add some final details. Oh God, okay. That's done. Fifty minutes. Not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. To be honest, I feel like I really got to take my time with everything except for the, the last details. But actually, really having mainly gone through the blocking and shaping phase and just started detailing and smoothing, this feels pretty bloody refined. And to knock that out in under an hour, I think is pretty cool. So let's go back to our five minutes. There it is. That's the difference between five minutes and 50 minutes. There's a, there's a fairly noticeable jump there. Like I said earlier in this video, this character was created in the first ultimate character design session I did on this channel. Now I'm gonna link in the description to that so you can go check it out. I invited you to use the hashtag UCD1 on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit to share your creations. And I wanna take a moment to go through that and give you a prize. One lucky creator of a King Amuntep V artwork is going to win a Huey on Canvas 22 plus professional digital display drawing tablet. A huge thank you to Hueon for sponsoring this video and providing a Canvas 22 Plus to you guys. And for those of you who don't know, the Canvas 22 Plus is my main drawing tablet on my desk where I make videos. The Canvas 22 Plus is a 21.5 inch display with a QLED screen, full lamination, and a high color gamut of 140% sRGB and 104% Adobe RGB. Its surface is a chemically etched anti-glare glass more durable than an anti-glare film. As you can see, even in my studio with bright lights does not get a huge amount of glare to work with. So you can work in bright environments without it affecting what you can see and how you can create art. You can also mount it on other stands. So while it comes with its own adjustable stand, I have mine mounted on a boom arm because I mean, boom arm. <laughs> the device comes with a USB-C type connection with a USB-C cable provided with a three-in-one cable to keep mess out of the way, full HD screen resolution, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, 60 degree tilt support, connectivity for Android mobile devices, and so, so much more. It's one of the best quality professional tablets you can get out there for the best price you can possibly find. So it's a big deal that here we are giving one of these to you guys for making some fantastic UCD one art. <laughs> As you can see, it goes far and wide. Oh my God. Jordan Persigati did a horror version. That's intense. Here is the uh, the old man who beat Amun in Amun's game or challenge of archery. This is why it's the ultimate character design. Not because my design is the ultimate design, design because we as a community make it ultimate by how much we can all add to it over time. Oh my God, is this a fall guy? It's a fall guy. <laughs> I just love that moment where like, 
rather than like some epic character pose or whatever, it's just this moment of introspection in this character's story. Like that's what I love about this. This artwork by Fail Lord depicts the moment where he shoots an arrow and defeats the God King that took over his kingdom. This is Suspicious Guy 26's depiction of essentially this stage of Amuntep and oh my God, if they aren't like perfectly in line. Oh, I forgot the scar. Ah, oh, no, well, yours is better than mine. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I get to pick one winner and I pick next stat one who made this amazing 3D depiction of King Amuntep the fifth. Oh my God. Also fitting in that we're doing a 3D thing today with our sculpture. Your sculpture is astounding and much better representative of that phase of Amuntep's life than mine. <laughs> Congratulations, next that you win a Hueon Canvas 22 Plus. Thank you for participating in this community and working so hard to make something cool just for the sake of being a part of it. And thank you, Hueon, for letting me have that prize to give someone in this community and being an amazing sponsor and part of this channel as well. I have one block of clay left. No! Don't worry, don't worry, I got this. See why I love Monster Clay? All right, with five hours on the clock, I started off with the armature as I did with the other two, but because I had a lot more time now, I could spend a little bit more time trying to make my sculpture as big as possible by filling out the armature and mimicking the silhouette in the interior of the sculpture as efficiently as I possibly could. This would enable me to hopefully really stretch my clay as far as I could. Next, my sculpting sketch began, just focusing on the broad chunks of geometry and slowly defining the most basic proportions and silhouette. And in some cases, like the back of the head or the Egyptian beard thingy, I realized I was missing some mass in my armature and just filling it in with clay would be using my precious clay too much. So in some instances, I could actually go back in and fill in some of the mass with foil and then put the clay on top. A useful trick just to know that once you've got your armature, you can, if you need to, go back back in and add some mass here and there to make your use of the clay as efficient as possible. With the general shape coming together, I moved on to the next step of basically doing the same thing, but to a slightly more refined degree, working on the shape and symmetry of the cheeks and the eyes and nose and so on, while adding features and details like the mouth and the ears and everything else. As you can see, so far I really haven't been too worried about smoothing things out. Really been focused on the mass proportions and the bulk adding and removing of clay really quickly. But with the proportions mostly where I'm happy with them at this point, the next step, while still rough as far as it being the shaping phase, does start to smooth things out and refine the sculpture really nicely. It involves using my scrapers and knives to remove the surface areas of clay and little chunks of geometry to slowly reveal a more defined silhouette. And this for me is the most satisfying part. Scraping back the clay feels so good and does so much to smooth and detail the model. And speaking of detail, this is where I can amp it up a lot more, carving in wrinkles and folds, adding depth and contrast to the sculpture. And seeing as the original prompt for this character involved being elderly, I, uh, I went to town on his wrinkles. the sculpture in a semi-final stage and all the core details roughed in, it was time to finish it off and make it as finalized as I could. With only an hour left on the clock, it was starting to creep up on me, so I got stuck into it. I softened all of the surfaces with my heat gun. This gives it all a bit of a glossy look, which I don't want in the end, but it does sort of create a more uniform blend between the areas of the sculpture. It makes it sort of easy to know what you have or haven't smoothed, because anything you haven't gone in and smoothed will still be a bit glossy, but it also gets rid of some of the more harsh sculpting that 
you had done before. So basically I just went over the whole sculpture top to bottom and carefully and as smoothly as possible scraped back a fine layer of clay to get a smooth but matte surface. And then as I got through to the detailed areas like the edge of the headdress or the eyes and eyebrows and all that, here is where I can take my time to sharpen and refine the details of the character as much as possible. Okay, now it's time to compare our results. Let's go back to our first creation. <laughs> it still clearly does look like a, an Egyptian head statue thing. It just looks bad. But I mean, for five minutes, pretty good. Let me know in the comments, but that's just my vote. Then we got a little serious. We got a 50 minute creation. And this is actually where it starts to look pretty cool. I really like this one. I didn't uh, have very long to do some of the details. And when I did the eyes, because the pupils are so small, he looks like slightly frenzied. I think it just looks really cool. I, I think this is a really solid result. And of course, last but not least, my five our sculpture. I have to say, as far as sculptures go, I am incredibly proud of this. I believe this is sort of up there with some of my best sculptures, especially for the face. I really feel like it is building on King Amuntep's story and the scope of that world. Now, if you enjoyed this process and you want to give this a go yourself, it really is approachable and easy and you can get everything you want to get started if you get Jazz's tools. I just threw my phone in the bin. Jazz's Super Sculpture Box. Everything I've used in this video and loads more. More clays, we've got Cos Clay, which is made by the same people who make Monster Clay, which is incredible. The custom Jazz tool case, by the way. I didn't point that out, but uh, <laughs> got my face on it. All of this and so, so, so much more. So go to the website, check it out. And a huge thank you to you for watching this video and supporting my work and joining in the arty party. Thanks for watching everyone. There are more videos over there you're bound to enjoy. I'm gonna link over to the one where I sculpted my vampire friend here. It was the first time I used the gray monster clay. That is it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.